Howdy, that's the part two of the yesterday's video. How can snow accumulation possibly could form these kinds of patterns? How can snow could form? Maybe I have to fix this title because there seems to be a mistake. But anyway, let's just have a look at that. Looks shisty to me. Yeah, nicely said. <laughs> so, let's go over to Wikipedia and read quickly something about shale, because it is important. Shale is a fine-grained clastic sedimentary rock formed from mud that is a mix of flakes of clay minerals, hydrous aluminium, phytosilicates, gaolin, aluminium, silica, oxygen and OH4, whatever that is, and tiny fragments, sealed sized particles of other minerals, especially quartz and calcite. Shale is characterized by its tendency to split into thin layers, laminae, less than one centimeter in thickness. This property is called fissility. Shale is the most common sedimentary rock the term shale is sometimes applied more broadly as essentially a synonym for mud rock, rather than in the more narrow sense of clay-rich fissile mud rock. So here we have a picture, shale. And like I said yesterday, it looks schisty to me. Schist happens. Get to know this brilliant stone. I just searched some page where you can read something about schist. So that's pure luck I found a page like this. Schist happens. Get to know this brilliant stone. Once again, geologists are a reliable source for corny humor. Yeah, as long as you agree with them, it might be true. But if you don't agree with them, Humor is probably the last thing you find. But anyway, I'm not sure why this trait is so prevalent in the field. Maybe it's the combination of science geekiness, overall good cheer, and long days wandering outside looking at rocks. The stone schist, pronounced schist, takes more than its fair share of abuse. Get your schist together. Tough schist. Tough is a rock made of volcanic ash. This rock is a piece of schist. You get the idea. Geologists have a third time, no, have a hard time resisting the third grade humor. <laughs> Pounds aside, schist is a metamorphic rock that is made mostly of mica minerals and has grains that are large enough to see with the naked eye. To put it another way, this stone sparkles like a Vegas hotel. Its dazzling luster is its hallmark trait. The sparkly aesthetic comes from the mica minerals, which are natural's, natural's glitter. Yeah, you can read the whole stuff, I will put links below. And tectonic forces transform dull mud to dazzling schist. Hmm. We will probably, maybe, come back to this later again. Now, shale. Here we have the schist. The metamorphic continuum. Increasing heat and pressure, increasing metamorphism. Not just to get that straight. This is why I have been talking about shale in the beginning. Because you need first shale, and before that we have clay. You know, let's put a C there for clay. Clay, shale, slate, fill out, just nice. No metamorphism is the rock, low grade metamorphism, a little bit more medium grade metamorphism, high grade metamorphism. You get the idea. And the metamorphism mechanisms aren't really explained. They're talking about pressure and heat. But they don't explain anywhere how exactly this would happen or would have, would have happened back in the past. Yeah, they are talking about plate tectonics, stuff like that. 
parts, very small parts of the plate tectonic theory is basically correct, but they are just very small parts. So anyway, schist, which is according to these people medium grade metamorphism. And then we have shale, which forms basically from clay and stuff like that. So that's Google Earth. And yesterday I watched up a quake, which was somewhere here, I guess. A very small quake, 0 0.8, no one cares about. And we have Mont Bovin, Mont Bovin, dog, dog persons. Mountain. Hmm. These very interesting features here. More mountains. More mountains. And the schisty place. It looks schisty to me. So we have to understand that. There has been some metamorphism going on there, otherwise we wouldn't have these kind of rocks. Obviously, on top of the mountain, because there is a valley in the background, you can see it. And also are these mountains rather dark, despite we are being in the Alps and it should be granite, they should be somehow brighter, these rocks. So now let's go back to Mont Bovin, Bovin. Let's zoom out a bit. Quake location, somewhere here. Let's draw a bigger circle. Mont Bovin. So they are not too far away from each other. And yesterday, just after the video, I went just to the north and I spotted this. To me, as a total random dude, a layman, or yeah, just a random dude, basically. This looks to me that there is something coming from beneath this glacier. Do we have a name for that? There is another water body. We will have a look at that too. Maybe I even talked about this already in the past. But to me, this looks like there would be warmer water than zero degrees, probably, come out of the ground and it carries some sediments, which are rather dark. Maybe clay. Maybe we are looking at a mud. Yeah, maybe it's a mud volcano. And it's not far from our quake location. Let's turn it around like this. We could actually measure that. At point, let's say the quake was somewhere here. And then we go over to this lake in the lake, three and a half kilometers. Okay. Not too far. So why shouldn't there be um, another source for something like this on the other side too? Yeah, check it out. Whoa. And there are uh, other very interesting features up here. Do we have anywhere a picture of these? Yeah, that's summer and it doesn't work. Let's try again. Yeah. See? Maybe in the past, once there has been a glacier. 
That's the start of the glacier. Now there might be just a small discharge stream somewhere going maybe inside the mountain too. I don't know. And I don't know if it's this one. But we had to check, we wanted to check out this other one. So here we are, we have to go to the right, I guess, to the west. And there could be another plume of stuff coming from underneath. And here yet another one, because it's dark. And we have open water. Vavergese. All right. Yeah, this looks interesting. Yeah, yeah, check it out. There's different kinds, different colored sediments here. Or rocks. These are rather, let's say, brownish. And this is rather black. Yeah, maybe we have two lenticular clouds on top of mountains, maybe even three, I don't know. And this we have seen already. Yeah, this would be an interesting place to go around and have a look-see. Yeah, this seems to be coming out of the mountain, this cloud. Yeah, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. And there's stuff going on, you know. You can see it with bare eyes. Yeah, someone has going has been going around there in winter time. And who knows, maybe there is one day more coming out of this mountain. Like bigger amounts. Now there is yet another interesting feature on top of a glacier. <laughs> and there's cracks around that. There's other cracks. What's going on here? Yeah, that's also rather circular in shape. Do we have others? Yeah. Actually, I still think, or I think I still show you some rocks I found recently. Because this might be boring now. Anyway, let me show you some rocks. Well, actually, this is just the whole point of that is that, as I said, this looks schisty to me. It would require clay. And maybe that's the source of the clay coming out of the ground. Like I said, it might be this kind of mud volcano thing buried beneath a glacier. Yeah, there might be many volcanoes. 
all over the world, which are covered by glaciers. Just look at Iceland, for example, or Greenland might be, but anyway. Now this might be the source of the rocks we just see. But anyway, to the rocks. So this is, these are just this kind of, I call them green stone. They might not be green, but they still might be green stones. That's one of the most beautiful I've found until now. And it still has to be polished a bit more. But it's amazing. It is truly amazing. And this is what I saw there. And I thought, yeah, this might be one of these. That's a rather big chunk. Which means it's rather hard somehow to cut it straight if you don't have the proper equipment. Look at these colors. And one thing is like, if you grind the stone and you get this kind of whitish or even yellowish, uh, water from the grinding the stone might be alkaline and also one good thing is being excited about finding exactly these kinds of stones because they are very soft so you don't know you don't have to grind too much in order to get it flat or shiny and they're all found at the same place We went there twice. It's not far from here. They are just amazingly colorful. And I wait until I get more of those glasses, what you need when you want to watch something under the microscope, because I need them. And then when I get them, I can try to make thin slices of these rocks and we can watch it under a microscope. It is not a professional microscope or whatsoever, but I think we can see through them. Most of these rocks are in a way you don't have to make a very, very, very thin slice in order to get the light shining through. And here you can see in the center. Let's zoom in a bit. It's not that sharp. But in the center it's dark. So it's rather clear crystal. But on the other side it's it got milky because it got smashed together with other stones. So the the clear crystal structure gets destroyed by smashing physical force application or however you want to call it like that's a good example on the other side it's milky but in the inside it's clear and even though it looks dark i bet it's going to be green under the microscope and that's already rather green this had the same color almost as the ore copper ore from Otokumpu. And I also think that's a green stone. It doesn't may look green, but I bet under the microscope it's going to be green. There's metal. There's almost in every one of those are metal flakes. Most of them are silvery in color.
And it's just amazing. Yeah, I would say that's a green stone, you know. Those which are black are just probably more... How to put it? Clean or something, or the... I just try to remember what's the chemical which seems to make them green. It's not phosphor. That's a granite, I think, but it has also nice colors. This was exceptionally hard. This might be some kind of volcanic tuff. It's full of holes. It's like it's like a foam. And this doesn't look like much, but check it out when you wetten it. Yeah. Ain't that beautiful? That's also green stone with metal in it. This might be also volcanic tough, tough fight or whatever. Not too sure about that, but there's also metal in this one. Different kinds of metals. Uh, we have to wait until it's wet because then it's better visible. There is this kind of bright metal here and darker metal here, maybe also here. So two different kinds of metals in the same stone. Maybe three even, I don't know. That's amazing. And I think I have about... Let's say the... I had two which I expected to be green stones and they weren't. And the total number of stones I was cutting in half was about... 25 or something, which I thought could be green stones. So out of those 25, in two cases, I missed with my, or my expectations got disappointed. <laughs> Which is rather good. It could have been uh, cutting 25 stones and only two were what I was expected, but it was the opposite. There was only two, which I expected, which weren't. All the others were what I had expected. Now that's somehow the raw version of stone. You cannot really see. You have to grind the surface rather evenly. Then you can start to see the crystal structure. That's a really, really small green stone. Yeah, I would say that's a green stone. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited about watching at these under the microscope. Yeah, let's end it with this one. That's also green, and it has a very, very nice hue to it. There's a lot of metal. All these dots here, it's all metal. Yeah. But anyway, this got unexpectedly 
a very long video. Yeah, we were watching something in the Arabs at the beginning, I think, and I drifted off. But anyway, it almost looks like having northern lights and the stars in the background. Yeah, maybe some of these things which are in these rocks, which give or give them colors or gave them colors. are not from this world. In other words, maybe stuff from the sun, you know, the northern lights touching the ground and creating some stones. But this is just what I think. <laughs> I will end it now. Thank you.